Welcome to Sunday School. We will talk about today about the gift of a pure heart. And we will start with a prayer. Dear Lord, we love you and praise you for who you are. You are an amazing God. We ask you, Father God, to open our hearts and minds so we could understand your word and be doers of your word. Please, Lord, take control of the class. Take control of the class, Holy Spirit and guide us through it. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, we love you. Amen. Be ready with your Bibles. Does anyone know what the word restore means? Restore means put it back together after it's being broken or messed up in some way. For example, I was loading my dishwasher and I dropped one of my plates. I broke it in three pieces and I tried to put back together and I did it. My play was restored. What about if my play is broken in a hundred or five hundred pieces? Do you think we'll be able to fix it? Probably not, right? Sometimes our sin is like a plate. When we disobey God, we totally wreck our lives. It might seem like you cannot put things together again. But God is so powerful and merciful that He's able to restore us when we repent of our sin and ask Him to forgive us. Our story is about King David and how he sinned against God 
but God was able to restore David and forgive him. Our story comes from the book of 2 Samuel. We have all kinds of stories about David and how brave he was and how he trusted God. One might me think that David has a perfect guy who had it all together, but we would be wrong. Because David, during the springtime, when kings went often to war, David put a man named Joab in charge of the army, but David stayed home. And one night, David was standing on the roof of the palace, and across the way, he noticed a beautiful woman. David asked his servants about her, and they said her name is Bathsheba, and she's married to Uriah, a strong warrior in your army. David sent messengers to Bathsheba to bring her to the palace, and she spent the night there. Sometime later, Bathsheba sent a message to David, saying, I am pregnant, and you are the father. David knew that it was wrong for him to have a baby with someone who was married to another man. But instead of confessing his sin, David tried to hide it. David had Uriah, but she was husband, brought home from the fighting. He told him to go home and spend time with his wife. That way everyone would think that Bathsheba's baby was Uriah's. But Uriah refused. He said, it's not right for me to go home and spend time relaxing when the rest of the army is out fighting. So instead of going home, Uriah slept at the entrance to the palace with the other servants. David's plan wasn't working. Instead of confessing his sin, he came out with another plan, one much worse than the first. David sent a message with Uriah and and told him to give it to Joab, the commander of the army. In the message David told Joab to put Uriah at the center of the battle, where the fighting was the most dangerous. That way Uriah would surely be killed. Joab obeyed David's order, and sure enough, Uriah died during the battle. David hid his sin from other people, but do you think he was able to hide it from God? God knew exactly what David had done, and God was not happy about it. God spoke to the prophet named Nathan and sent Nathan to David to confront him with his sin. Nathan came to David, and instead of coming right out and accusing David, he told him a story. The story was of a rich man who had animals. There was also a poor man who had only one baby lamb. One day a visitor came to the rich man for dinner. But the rich man didn't want to kill any of his own animals for the meal. Instead, he took the one baby lamb from the poor man and served it to the visitor for dinner. When David heard the story, he was furious. That rich man deserved to die, he said. Nathan looked at him and said, You are the man. At the moment, David knew that he couldn't hide his sin any longer. He realized that a terrible thing he had done. David knew that he deserved to die for what he had done. But God promised that David wouldn't die. Instead, Nathan told David that the baby that he and Bathsheba had would die. How do you think David will respond to God's mercy? Instead of continuing to hide his sin, David finally confessed it to God. He also begged God to forgive him. David wrote Psalm 51 as a prayer to God. Let's read it together. Psalm 51 and 10. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion. Blow out my transgressions, wash away all my iniquity, and cleanse me from sin, creating me a pure heart of God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore me to the joy of salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. What did David ask God to do? And we see this prayer. We see that he asked him for forgiveness, make his heart pure, and do not forsake him. When we do something wrong, our first thought is often try to hide what we have done, right? But there is no need to hide it from God. 
Not because God is like a big bully up in heaven trying just to get us, right? When we do, we do wrong. But because God loves us so much that He wants to restore us even when we sin. Is there anything we can do that is so bad that God will never ever forgive us? No. Nothing. No way. God knows that we are weak and sinful and our hearts are naturally far, far from Him. But He loves us anyway. God created us so we could pour our love to Him, our lives to Him. And He's eager and willing to do that. Because of our saying like David, we know that we deserve to die. The Bible said in the book of Romans that the punishment for sin is death. Someone must die to pay for our sins. God loves us so much that He was willing to die for us. Isn't that incredible? We serve such a loving, glorious God who has offered us a wonderful gift. Forgiveness for our sins. And a pure heart. And there is nothing that we have to do to try to earn it. We cannot earn the forgiveness of God. God forgive us when we turn to Jesus and per and put our faith in Him. When we follow Jesus and repent of our sins, we will fight freedom from our sin if we do that. And just like David prayed, we can ask God to restore the joy of your salvation and grant you a willing spirit to sustain you. This is very important, kids. There is nothing that could separate us from God. But the sin that we have, we have to confess it. We repent from it and ask Jesus to be our Lord and Savior. Believe that God gave Jesus to the world so we could have eternal life, so we could be forgiven from all our sins. Only because He loves us. He loves us so much. And this Christmas that is coming right up, there is a way, a um, special gift that is waiting for us. A gift of forgiveness and a pure heart. Let's have our heart clean from sin and make it pure so we could receive Jesus into our hearts. We could welcome him and ask him, please, Jesus, be my Lord and Savior, be my King. I want to serve you. I want to love you. Help me to do it. And he will do it. Let's pray together. Dear Lord, thank you, Father God, for your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for giving us Him so we could be safe from sin. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of forgiveness. And we ask us, Lord, to forgive us, to clean our hearts, and forgive, forgive us from any sin that we have right now. Give us a pure heart, Lord, so we could have you inside of us. We could ask you to live in it. And we ask you, Jew, Jesus Christ, to be our King, Lord, and Savior. We recognize that you die on the cross for our sins. And we ask you, Jesus, to live in us, to abide in us and our families. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, guide us. Guide us to be obedient to God, to be hungry for Him, have a relationship with him in prayer and reading the Bible. And in the name of Jesus, we ask you for those who don't know you, Lord, so you could reveal to them and set them free and save them so they could be free from sin and come to you and they could live eternally in heaven. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. We love you, Lord. Amen. Have a blessed week. Remember to read your Bible and to pray and obey God. When we obey Him, we will see God's rewards. 
Have a nice week. Bye bye.